absolutely beautiful on the nose. It's almost like you're walking into a bakery. Um, you get this nice kind of yeastiness mixed with some like lemon, citrus, almost a little bit like mushroomy um, earth tone. Pierre Gimenez is a master of uh, what is a Blanc de Blanc, which is all white grapes, and in this case, 100% Chardonnay. Um, they are a Vignon producer, which essentially means that they're farmers first and foremost. And instead of selling or buying grapes, they keep their own that they farm and they make their own champagne. So there's a lot of love, quality that goes into doing this process. With Champagne, it's so unique in its own way where it has its whole secondary fermentation, which creates this um, sparkling effect of effervescence that we all really love. That sparkling effect, the acidity, um, those earthy flavors, um, they just make a magical pairing with so many different dishes. You could almost pair it with a sweet dish, you could pair it with something nice and light such as a salad because that acidity matches the vinaigrette, um, as well as it goes with some seafood because uh, with the acidity, you almost get a little level of salinity and saltiness, and that just craves to go with seafood, craves to go with richer dishes, um, and it's just such a versatile pairing that always gets overlooked. We're going to uh, one of everyone's favorite countries to drink Sauvignon Blanc. We're going to New Zealand. Um, this is a new wine that we actually just put on our glass board. Um, this is Te Mata. Um, it's a family in the state since the late 1800s. Um, this is not coming from Marlborough, your typical place to find New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. This is coming from Hawke's Bay. A little bit more mountainous there. You have vines that are kind of protected from the, the harsh terrain that you can find. Um, and this is also a very French-inspired Sauvignon Blanc. So on the nose, um, it almost smells like I just came from a gas station. Um, you have this um, almost petroly nose, um, lace citrus, um, really, really aromatic uh, and quite floral as well. On the palate, it's a very New Zealand-esque style. Grapefruit just shooting at you. But since it has these two French grapes of Semillon and Sauvignon Gris, it adds this creaminess. Almost get a butter tone, sweet caramelized shallot. Um, it's just, I mean, savory and tart all at the same time. It's um, a wine that hasn't made its decision yet on what it wants to be because it just has all that bright citrus that you want with the New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, but almost is drinking with the body and texture of a Chardonnay. This is a wine that definitely doesn't calm down. Um, it just keeps on going, um, especially in the pa palate, so lively. Um, craves to go with anything with nice, rich cream sauce, saffron, um, and, you know, just has this underlying just earth notes that you never find with New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, um, which is why I really enjoy this one right here. This is a really cool wine. It's never been to the state of Ohio before, so we were super happy to get a little allocation of this. Um, this is a 2021 Chakras Monique. It's a Chardonnay coming from the Patagonias down in Argentina. Um, they've only made about five, six vintages of this wine. Um, it's the brainchild of the world's two most famous winemakers. You have Jean-Marc Rouleau from Burgundy, um, who is kind of a godfather of Chardonnay. And then you have Pierre Rochetto, who is the winemaker of Sassicaia, um, typically the number one uh, wine year in and year out of Italy. Most people, you know, always think that Chardonnay is essentially, you know, you get butter, you um, get oak, um, almost kind of like a burnt popcorn um, from the movie theater. Um, but Chardonnay is such a versatile grape, um, and it's all about the winemakers and the land that really kind of show the grape for what it is. You still get bright citrus. Now you're starting to get a little bit more into the realm of some uh, tree fruit, uh, some stone fruit in here. As you almost get a little bit of like an orange marmalade, um, yuzu. And there's just some bright fruit flavors are, are really in there. Um, but you can get a little bit more depth on the nose too, almost going back to the champagne where you're almost getting a little bit layers of kind of like a mushroom dexel, just like hidden behind uh, some of the citrus. Um, just using a little bit of oak, you know, allows this wine to just be so approachable right now with only um, two years of age on it. Um, but you have this just perfect balance. And you know, I think that's one thing that the French do better than almost anyone else. It's just the balance of the wine. It's not ever one dimensional. Um, it has those layers, it has the hidden um, citrus, it has the vanilla, almost a little bit of a, a toffee or butterscotch, just a little bit of that shining through with just the right amount of oak. Here we are going to Rhone Valley in France. This is the 2021 Matthew Barrette Petitars. Um, this is classified as a Côte de Rhone, um, but this is 100% Syrah 
And Cote de Rhone's are typically found in southern Rhone Valley in France. It's kind of the workhorse of Rhone Valley. But this is a rare exception where it's all coming from northern Rhone, just from the outskirts of Cote Rôti. Um, Cote Rôti, or the Roasted Hill, is one of the most famous places in the entire world for Syrah. And the whole reasoning is it's very similar to Mosul in Germany, where you have these very, very, very steep hillsides, and the vines have to struggle to work on that. And the workers have to struggle to pick those vines. But you get wine that just showcases um, the power intensity of what um, a Syrah can be. But this is coming a little bit from outside of those steep hills of Cote Rôti, uh, made from an amazing producer. This is kind of the entry-level Ferrari into the collection of Matthew Barrett's um, wines. Um, being 100% Syrah, it can be quite animal, quite intense. But what the winemaker does here to just showcase the grape itself, it's all aged in cement eggs, um, which are exactly what it sounds like. Um, it's a big egg-like um, dome, essentially, that is created with uh, cement. And what that does is it rounds the wine out. So if a wine has a lot of acidity, a lot of tannin and power, it just kind of diminishes those all just a little bit and just showcases the purity of fruit. Um, especially on the nose, I mean, this is as floral as it gets. Um, it's almost a little bit of a level of poopery, roses, I get like lavender field. It kind of builds up the palate. You almost get a little bit of a natural um, wine essence in this, where you get like a sweet sugared plum, almost kind of like that kind of sugar coating on some uh, sour uh, bears um, or some sour candies. This wine is elegant. It's light on its feet. Unlike a lot of other Syrah, you almost get blueberry jam, um, blackberry laced, um, almost a little bit of like a mold spice tone um, to this as well. And very unlike Syrah. Um, and I think that's really what Matthew Barrett wanted here to do. Um, and he wanted to make something that's a little bit more approachable. Um, and this is one of my favorite wines right now to do um, with a cheese course. Uh, because it has so much fruit, it doesn't have any of that oak, which brings out a little bit of bitterness in the cheese and in the wine. So it's just showcasing um, the purity of Syrah in a beautiful way. For the final wine, um, this is one of my all-time favorites, um, especially um, here at the refectory. Um, here we have a 1982 Domaine de Rancy Rivso Ombre. I would say this resembles more kind of a Portuguese um, or even um, Spanish style of wine, as this can be really kind of similar to a Palo Cortado Sherry. This could be very similar to a very aged port, or as well more even to current vintages of Madeira of just that kind of nutty and cinnamon and caramel just all works so well. And it's just done in an area that you don't typically think of, of dessert wine. This is 100% Macabeo. Um, this is coming from a little quaint village called Rifsel. Um, Rifsel is uh, very south in France, only about 20 miles away from the Spanish border, so very hot here. Um, being 100% Macabeo, which is a very neutral grape, um, this wine really imparts a lot of uh, what makes it um, in the cellar. Um, so for uh, 41 years of age, this spent 38 years in an oak barrel named Untouched. Um, so you have this very neutral white grape that is getting all of those flavors um, coming from the oak. On the nose, it's unlike almost anything else out there. You get the decadence of chocolate, almost a little of coffee on the nose, um, a sharp apple cider like nose um, that I would get very similar to a sherry and nuttiness um, very similar to a sherry and to a Madeira. The palate on it is just incredible. It's vast, it's huge, it's brooding. Um, you get this caramel, brown sugar, cinnamon, a little bit of like a spiced cocoa to it. Um, and then this very, very big base of just like almond hazelnuts. Um, almost a little bit of like a salted peanut that you get with this. Um, with this um, vast amount of age on this right now, you're starting to get a little bit more into that decadence of coffee and espresso, um, where a little bit, when it's younger, it has a little bit more of just bright cinnamon. Um, but now you're starting to get a little bit more deterioration of the oak. You're getting a little bit more deterioration of the grapes, and you're starting to just get a richer um, profile and more layers um, to this wine.